Welcome to Bible study on this chilly Wednesday. Uh, we actually had some snow uh, yesterday. It's pretty much uh, melted now, but welcome to winter, all right? Um, we're talking about God uses ordinary people. Uh, I've really enjoyed this study. I say that every week, and it's the truth. Um, we can learn by so many people uh, in the Bible, uh, good and bad. And today we're going to learn, uh, good and bad, about John Mark. Uh, John Mark was a, a person in the book of Acts. As a matter of fact, um, we don't see anything specifically about John Mark outside the book of Acts. A um, couple things we know about John Mark is uh, his mother's name was Mary. The Bible tells us in Acts chapter number 12, um, Peter, if you'll remember, he was in prison. The church was praying for him to get released. Uh, lo and behold, uh, a miracle happened. He was he was uh, sprung from prison by God. He went to a house, and if you'll remember, he knocked on the gate, and that was the house of Mary. Now, Mary was the mother of John Mark. Uh, John Mark is known uh, as a companion of Paul and Barnabas. He traveled with Paul and Barnabas on his first missionary journey. Uh, Acts chapter 15 tells us that um, that he quit, and, uh, and, and that caused some problems, and we're going to talk about that in our lesson today. So the bulk of our lesson will be about um, John Mark and about uh, this disagreement uh, that John Mark caused by his quitting. But you know what? Quitting's not the end. Uh, maybe God will speak to your heart during this Bible study uh, today. Um, you know, we all uh, quit at one time or another. Maybe not, um, uh, we don't quit uh, literally. Maybe sometimes we just quit in our heart and we quit in our mind. And And so if that's you today, maybe you've quit some things in your life whether it be your service to God or, or your Bible reading, your your um, maybe you quit your marriage already in your heart, even though you're literally still married. Uh, we can quit a lot of things. And so the good thing about John Mark is he didn't stay a quitter. Uh, he got back in the saddle again, and, and that's very, very important. In getting back in the saddle, um, God was able to use him a second time. I'm so glad about second chances. So we're going to talk about John Mark, uh, how that uh, there was a disagreement, how that God um, used that disagreement in a lot of ways. We're still learning uh, about the disagreement that Paul and Barnabas had over John Mark many, many years later. But just a few things I want to bring out of, out of this lesson uh, this afternoon. Uh, John Mark was a quitter, yes, but he got back in the race. Uh, John Mark was the source of a great disagreement between Paul and Barnabas. God used Paul and Barnabas in a great way uh, to just reach many, many people uh, with the gospel. And because of this um, quitting that John had, um, it caused a great disagreement between two great men, uh, Paul and Barnabas. So we want to talk about uh, disagreements. And we're going to talk about how Paul, even though he had this disagreement with Barnabas regarding John Mark uh, in uh, Second Timothy chapter 4, uh, later on in his ministry, he said this, only Luke is with me. He said, take Mark, which was John Mark, and bring him with you. Why? Because he's profitable to me for the ministry. I'm so glad God does not judge us over one little chapter in our lives, nor should we judge others over one little chapter uh or even a few chapters. David, in his life, for instance, had a lot of bad chapters, but you know what? God used David in a wonderful, wonderful way. Maybe in your life, you've had some bad chapters. Hey, let me encourage you. Uh, our whole book is a lot of chapters. Just because you have a, uh, a few bad chapters doesn't mean you have to have a bad ending and a bad book. And so, John quit. It caused... Barnabas and Paul to have a disagreement. Now, what do we do when we disagree with good people? We're going to have disagreements. Uh, there's disagreements and discontentment everywhere in the world. Right now, of course, it's election season, and we just had a big election nationwide and statewide and local and all these different elections. 
And these, de these elections are about disagreements, but you know, we don't want these disagreements to tear our country apart. And unfortunately, uh, they are in some ways, and that's another subject all in itself. And Jesus even warned us, he said, a kingdom divided against itself shall not stand. And so we have to realize these disagreements uh, can cause a lot of problems. And so disagreements, unfortunately, can even happen in the church. Sometimes these political things, we just had the COVID-19 thing and it's still going on, unfortunately. But you know what? Unfortunately, it's caused a lot of disagreement uh, in churches. It's caused a lot of disagreement between brethren and uh, the elections that we just had. Unfortunately, sometimes those disagreements, political disagreements, uh, filter into the church. Um, but disagreements uh, have to do mainly with the flesh. Uh, there's some good disagreements. There's some bad disagreements. And so we have to choose our disagreements uh, wisely. Let me back up. We need to allow God to choose our disagreements according to what's uh, specific in the Word of God. You know, the book of uh, Corinth was a carnal church. Uh, it was a church filled with immature believers. So they had a lot of disagreements. And, you know, I think disagreements, if we look at the Scripture and we look at our modern-day lives, um Disagreements, many times that you'll have hotter disagreements, worse disagreements, um, the more immature you and I are. And so the more unspiritual we become, uh, it seems like we'll just get angrier and want to fight with each other uh, even more. But in the book of Corinthians, uh, the Corinth church was, again, um, symbolized that they had just a lot of problems there. And beginning in chapter number one, I'm going to read what Paul said about the church of Corinth. He said, Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, and that there be no division among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. I like how he says perfectly joined together. Have you ever put together one of those thousand piece puzzles? And boy, there's those pieces, those two pieces, you're sure they go together, but boy, they're just so close, but they don't go together. But God wants us to perfectly fit together. It says right here, be of the same mind. And it's not easy to be of the same mind. Wow. Again, I mentioned COVID. I mentioned the election and, and many, many other things in our society, even in church. Uh, wow, we're not going to agree. The early church did not agree. Uh, Romans chapter 14, we'll touch on that a little bit. Uh, Paul uh, hit on some of these uh, disagreements. It says here, be perfectly joined together in the same mind, in the same judgment, for it hath been declared unto me of you. So he heard this report, my brethren, by them which are of the house of Chloe, that there are contentions among you. Paul said, hey, uh, I'm writing this letter in, in, in big part, large part, because there's there's these contentions that I'm hearing about. If we jump to chapter number three, a familiar passage you probably heard, Paul says, I fed you with milk and not with meat because you're not able to bear it. Yet you're not now able to bear it. That, those little babies, you can't give them meat. You have to give them milk because their their stomachs cannot handle that meat and it'll actually hurt them. Paul said, you're, you're a bunch of baby Christians. Um, you're full of contention. I can't feed you <clears throat> the meat of the word of God. All you can handle is the milk of the word of God. And he goes on to say, why? He says, you're carnal. Uh, there is among you envy, strife, divisions. Are you not carnal and walk as men? And here's part of the problem. One says, I'm a Paul. And another, I am of Apollos. Are you not carnal? So they're taking sides. These two good men, Paul, Apollos, uh, preachers, and they're taking sides. And it says, who is Paul? And who is Apollos? but ministers by whom you believe, even as the Lord gave to every man. And listen to what Paul says here. What wisdom? He says, I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then is neither he that planteth anything and neither he that watereth. Listen to this, but God gives the increase. He said, you know what? We're on the same side. One plants, one waters, but God gives the in, increase. We are all on the same team. He says, now that he that planteth and he that watereth are one, 
and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. And I love verse number nine, for we are laborers together with God. You are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. So we had these disagreements in, in Corinth and Paul says, hey, what are you doing? And he keeps trying to correct it and correct it and correct it. And, you know, again, there's disagreements in churches today. And that's not going to, I'm not going to specifically mention a ton of agreements. But I want us to see that, hey, you know what? Um, disagreements don't have to uh, stay that way. They don't have to take away God's blessing. They don't have to discourage you uh, to quit or make you angry and say things that you regret and do things that you regret. Um, when people... Uh, disagree, okay, that's going to happen. But being disagreeable, that's another subject all in itself. Why? Because this frustration will begin to leak out. Uh, you'll, be, you'll begin to say things. You'll get angry. Acts chapter 15. They had two major disagreements in Acts chapter number 15. Uh, one of those disagreements was over doctrine. We see it right away in Chapter 15, the book of Acts, verses 1 and 2. Some men came down from Judea to Antioch. Remember, Paul was in Antioch. Man, they had a lot of things going there. Christians were first called uh, Christians at Antioch. And they were teaching. Uh, they, came, they came from Judea to Antioch, and they were teaching, Brothers, unless you are circumcised, according to the custom taught by Moses, you cannot be saved. And so, wow, the church of Jerusalem was having a major uh, meltdown, major problem. There were a group of Pharisees that got saved, a group of Jews that were saved. Now they're trying, trying to say, hey, you know what? You cannot truly be saved without also getting circumcised. Uh, they were adding to salvation. We can't add to salvation, whether it's circumcision, whether it's baptism, uh the Bible is very clear that salvation is by grace through faith, not of your works, lest any man should boast. And so these men, they came in and they were saying, except ye be circumcised, according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. And so here was a major disagreement over doctrine. And, um, and then the second disagreement we see down towards the end of the chapter there was a disagreement that Paul and Barnabas, and I alluded to that already, that Paul and Barnabas had this disagreement of opinion over John Mark. Uh, Paul said, no, I'm not taking him. He quit the last time. Barnabas said, no, we need to take him. So we have two major disagreements. Uh, we have a disagreement over doctrine, uh, which is which is very serious. And then we have... Uh, uh, a, a disagreement over opinion, which can also be uh, very serious. Uh, but we need to learn what these arguments are, what these disagreements are. Is it a doctrine issue, which is black and white, or is it a gray issue, which is just opinion? In Acts chapter 15, it says, in, After some days, Paul said unto Barnabas, Let us go again and visit our brethren in every city. We have preached the word of the Lord and see how they do. And Barnabas determined to take with him John, whose surname was Mark. By the way, this was his nephew, we see in another scripture. He says, hey, let's take John Mark back with us. The Bible says Paul thought it not good to take him with them, who departed from them from Pamphylia, and he went not with them to the work. Again, God's not specific about this, but at Pamphylia, he said, uh, adios. He said, I'm leaving. I'm going back home. And Paul said, I'm not taking him this time because he quit the first time. And sadly, verse number 39, the Bible says, and the contention was so sharp between them that they departed asunder one from the other. So Barnabas took Mark and sailed unto Cyprus. And Paul, we know, took Silas. So they had a major difference of opinion. This was not some salvation doctrine that God is very clear about that we are saved by grace through faith, not out of, out of ourselves. It's not of work, lest any man should boast. This was an opinion about a person uh, named John Mark. And so um, disagreements over matters of opinion, uh, wow, 
uh, can cause the church major, major uh, problems. And we cannot rise up those disagreements of opinion to be the same as doctrinal issues. And so we have to be careful about that. Hey, we're going to have disagreements about a lot of things. Now, again, the purpose of this lesson is not just to name a list of disagreements. I'm not going to get go down that rabbit trail uh, today. But there are things that we disagree. I'll just say music. Music is one of those things where people uh, have a lot of disagreements about uh, in the church. And so uh, differences of opinion. I mean, God doesn't specifically tell us, okay, we can use some other verses and say, okay, uh, and we can uh, look for other verses that maybe pertain, we think pertains to music. And we have to be very careful about those kind of things because uh, we can just, again, start going down a road. And a lot of it, when it boils right down to it, has to do with our own flesh, our own life experiences, our own background, uh, in music, all these different things come into play, which affect our, again, opinion. But the Word of God is cut and dried on many, many things, and doctrine is that thing that I'm talking about. And so we can have disagreements. Uh, Paul, Barnabas, two very godly good men, had a disagreement of opinion over John Mark. Now, again, the leaders in the church, I mean the Church of Jerusalem, had a major problem, a disagreement over doctrine about circumcision. So they actually had to leave the mission field, go home. They actually had to have a big meeting. And we're going to read about that in a minute. But let's learn that disagreements, first and foremost, uh, I want to say foremost, but they're ine inevitable. Inevitable. Hey, are you married? Don't raise your hand. You're going to have disagreements in your marriage. You're going to have disagreements on the job, especially. You're going to have disagreements uh, in the church. It doesn't matter what it's over. We're going to have disagreements. I mean, what color to paint a wall, a music, different things. We're going to have disagreements. And so they're inevitable. Here's another thing. Disagreements are dangerous. They're dangerous. Those disagreements in your marriage can get so intense, of course, it can lead to even divorce. Those disagreements uh, with work can cause you to quit your job. Those uh, disagreements with friends, I can think about friends that had disagreements. I mean, I'm not talking about doctrine, salvation, different things like that in the Bible. But I'm talking about just disagreements about, about different things. And boy, the contention, just like Paul and Barnabas, two godly men, the contention was so great between them over this opinion about John Mark that they departed ways. Now, John Mark is a good guy, okay? Uh, John Mark actually wrote the gospel of what? Mark. Now, you think God would use him uh, to write, uh, to pen that through the prompting of the Holy Spirit, of, of course. Um, I mean, one of the gospels. And so John Mark was a great person, great guy. He did quit. He had a past. He had a history. Who does not have a history? Who does not have a, a past? Paul did, by the way. And he said, forgetting those things which are behind, I what? I pressed hard them toward the mark. And so disagreements, disagreements are inevitable. We're going to have them. Disagreements are dangerous. And I believe this, disagreements, most of them in many ways, are solvable. Are solvable. What do we do? Well, we talk. We have discussion. Unfortunately, sometimes people won't even talk. They're not even willing to listen. They're not even willing to open up their ears and their hearts. But disagreements are Inevitable. We're not going to see eye to eye with, on everything, even among best friends, even among brothers and sisters in Christ. And the early church was no different. Uh, they had a disagreement about meat offered to idols. I will touch on that one. Uh, Romans chapter 14, uh, there was a problem that these Gentiles got saved. Uh, they had no, no problem eating this cheap meat in the marketplace that had been already used, been offered to idols. Now, Jews, because of their culture, because of their background, they would not eat that meat. And they said, man, that's wrong. And, of course, Paul addressed that. Why? Because contention. Because this disagreement was causing disharmony, disunity in the church. And Paul told them, hey, one thinks it's okay to eat meat offered to idols. One says it's not 
okay. Hey, I got a solution. Let every man be persuaded in his own mind. Who are you to judge your brother? I mean, Romans 14 is a great chapter about these gray areas. And he said, you know what? Let every man be persuaded in his own mind, whether it's a holiday, whether it's eating meat off of the idols and many, many uh, other things. Now, again, uh, as a, a doctrine, uh, salvation, uh, no, we're not going to let every man be persuaded in his own mind what salvation is. No, we're going to leave the mission field. We're going to go to Jerusalem. We're going to straighten this out so that people do not think. And so, again, I'm going to go to Acts chapter 15 about this um, disagreement about doctrinal issues. And again, salvation in this situation. And certain men came down. They taught the brethren, unless you're circumcised, According to the law of Moses, custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. And what did Peter do? Uh, he spoke up and they had a conference in Acts chapter 15, verse 7. And when there had been much disputing, okay, there was, there was some heavy disagreeing going on. When there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, men and brethren, you know how that a good while ago God made a choice among us. That Gentiles by my mouth, you remember when Peter had the vision about the sheet coming down from heaven? And Peter's talking about that. He said that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, which knoweth the hearts, uh, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did to us, and put no difference between us and them. Talking about Jews and Gentiles purifying their hearts by faith so they get got saved the same way we did. Now listen to what he says, what Peter says to these people. Now therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples? Talking about circumcision, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear. Hey, our fathers couldn't keep the law. Why are we going to keep trying to put this yoke of the law upon the necks of these Gentiles, they, they can't keep it, neither can we. And I'll read it again. Now why tempt you God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear. But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus, we shall be saved, even as they, the grace of the Lord Jesus. So what are you doing uh, teaching this? It's not right. And so they, they made it right. So... Disagreements are inevitable. Here's a second thought. Disagreements, again, are dangerous. Um, again, chapter 15, verse 2. They had no small dissension and dispute. And so we have to be careful about becoming angry. You know, these political discussions, disagreements can lead uh, to anger. And if we're not careful, they can even lead... I read a couple instances where people start fist fighting over these type of things. Uh, I mean, people go to sporting events. One guy's wearing one jersey. One fan is wearing a different jersey. And they go to fisticuffs because uh, of a disagreement about sports and, a, and a, about different things. And so we have to be careful. God tells us to be angry and sin not uh, in Ephesians chapter 4. Uh, be angry and sin not. Don't let the sun go down upon your wrath. Don't stay angry. Don't let these things fester in your heart. It'll affect your sleep. It'll affect your health. God says, be not angry. Be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. And, and it's interesting. The very next verse, neither give place to the devil. Don't give place to the devil. Uh, and we do that when we lose our cool Every time we lose our emotions, we're given place to the devil to do things we normally wouldn't do, to say things we normally wouldn't say. Why? Because we're angry. And so disagreements are, are very, very dangerous. Why? Because they lead to anger. In the worst case scenarios, they lead to uncontrollable anger, and it causes a lot of problems. That's why James, he admonishes us. And I, I love the scripture, James 1.19 we all of us would do well to heed this. So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. And boy, we know that's the truth. The wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. 
And so, you, you know, you've probably heard it said, anger is one letter short of danger. All you have to do is add the D in the front and anger becomes danger. Disagreements can be dangerous um, in any relationship, uh, in any church, in any country. We just have to be very, very careful. And let me give you some good news. Disagreements are solvable, are solvable. You know, um, later again, Paul said, bring with me, John. He was saying I was wrong. John is profitable to me for the ministry. And you know what? There's some good in John. Yes, he quit. And let me remind you today, there's good in people. I mean, yes, maybe they messed up. Maybe they did wrong. I'm not condoning that. But I'm saying, you know what? There's good in people. And so we do well to look for the good in people. And disagreements are solvable. The Bible says in Proverbs 13, verse 10, only by pride cometh contention. Only by pride comes contention. These disagreements, for the most part, now not every situation, but for the most part, disagreements are, 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 are rooted in pride. Uh, we think we know everything. We think we're right. Everybody else uh, is wrong. And so most problems, uh, disagreements are solvable, but we must humble ourselves. Only by pride comes contention. And we must go to who knows all things, um, God. We must go to the word of God. And if it's not spelled out, I mean specifically in the word of God, we need to learn to give grace. You know what? Because we don't know everything. One of these days when we get to heaven, that which we know in part right now, one day we will know it, but not till then. And in the meantime, give grace. The Bible says it this way. Romans chapter 12, verse 18. Powerful. I love it. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. As much as lieth in you, if at all possible, don't let these disagreements cause you to lose fellowship. Don't let these disagreements cause you to get divorced. Don't let these disagreements cause you to quit your job. Hey, if possible, as much as life in you, Paul said to the Romans, live peaceably with all men. Uh, Paul told Timothy this, uh, young man entering the ministry, a servant of the Lord must not quarrel or strive, but be gentle to all men. And very, very important. And you know what? There's enough anger and there's enough contention in this world. We don't need it in our homes. We don't need it in our churches. And so disagreements are, so are solvable by being humble and also by looking to what God says. What does God say about this disagreement? Um, Patience also. Patience. You know, many, many times I come to a dilemma, I come to a disagreement, I come to a problem, a situation. And you know what I do? I go to the Word of God, I wait, I pray. I ask the Holy Spirit, doesn't God promise that the, us that the Holy Spirit will what? Will guide us and do all uh, truth. And so, let me encourage you today again. Maybe you're thinking of quitting. I'd like to encourage you, first of all, don't. But if you have quit, realize this, God's not done with you. God used John Mark in a great way after he quit and went home. God even used him to write one of the Gospels, the book of Mark. So let me encourage you uh, to get back in the saddle again. Let me ask you this. Are you disagreeable? It's one thing to disagree, but we don't have to become disagreeable. We don't have to lose our temper. We don't have to lose our cool. We don't have to lose our testimony. And so um, I hope that's a help to you, especially in this time of disagreement that we're living in politically, all different kinds of ways. Um, God can help us through it. We don't have to lose our testimony. We don't have to lose our faith. And in most cases, we don't have to lose friends. And I've seen it happen. Uh, it's sad. And so may God help us all uh, to disagree, 
but not be uh, disagreeable and help us to be able to differentiate between what is opinion and what is um, uh, doctrine. And so hope to see you tomorrow night at Zoom, 7 o'clock. A lot of things uh, to pray for. And God willing, we'll see you on Sunday, whether it be online or whether it be in person.